Bye. Bye. Get out. Get out. Get out. Have you ever wondered about theory? Interested in why things sound good? Well, friends, fellows, and students, I am your guy, your one-stop shop to all things theory. Hi, I'm Elijah Leon, or Eli, since we're friends, and today I'm gonna talk to you about theory, specifically this. You need to leave. Hey, don't freak. I'll explain this, I swear. But first, how do we even get to whatever this is? This circle right here represents a much more simple progression, the 2-5-1 progression. Now, I can hear the voices. Eli, what the hell are you talking about? What are these numbers? What is a progression? Unfortunately, the basics of theory is a completely separate video, one I'm sure someone has made, but let's break it down anyways. These numbers, or Roman numerals, are in relation to the chord. We can derive a lot of information about chord quality from these Roman numerals as well. For example, this is going to be a dominant chord. This is a major chord. On the back here, we have a half diminished chord as well as a minor. The 2-5-1 progression is an example of a musical schema, often found in jazz. In fact, this schema happens so frequently in jazz that it's one of the most fundamental progressions. Now, like most things in art, music theory in the theory of music is all simply common practices that we see in specifically Western music that we put into writing. The 2-5-1 progression is so common and because they are incomplete, two fives are possible and can be identified because of the iconic root motions from chords as well as the quality. We need both people. We get some more cool things involving the 2-5-1 progression, specifically the use of applied chord, of applied two fives. Now, what are applied chords? Long story short, it's a chromatic chord that lives in a different key than its home. It's a visitor, and composers often use the technique of using applied chords to examine the relationship between quality and function. And composers love to take the dominant chord out of its key and slap it in a new one. The good news is that the applied dominants don't lose their dominant quality, which works well for the progression that we are focused on, because this whole thing can be used wherever. The turnaround is a great example of the use of applied chords, specifically in how this progression can be applied outside of the tonic or home key. The turnaround is a progression that helps loop us back to the original key. Here we have a typical progression. Using applied chords, we can sub the 5 7 2 chord with a 4 chord, and with the 2 chord, we can proceed the 5 7. The 2 chord can then be tonicized with its own 2 5 1 progression, wrapping it back into the original key. So, all that said, what does this circle mean? This, my fellow students, is the 2-5 space. It shows all the possible 2-5-1 motions together and also helps us visualize their relationships. We got different lines here. This one is to show the motion of the 2-5-1 progression. This one is to show that if you transpose each 5-7 seven, seven chord by a fifth, you'll get to the next 5-7 chord in the circle. This one is to show that if you lowered the chord's third, you would move to the next 2-7 chord in the circle. And lastly, this one is to show that if you lower the seventh of the chord, the tonic chord would become the next 5-7 chord, or dominant. So now we know, and knowing is truly only half of the battle. Want to really dive in for yourself? I'll link a free book. My name is Eli, and thank you for watching.